Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be doing an NCLEX practice question specifically over calcitonin which is used to treat osteoporosis. So let's take a look at our NCLEX practice question. Your patient who has osteoporosis is prescribed to take calcitonin. Which assessment finding below is a possible adverse reaction of this medication and requires you to notify the physician immediately? A. Constipation B. Abdominal pain that is found at one-third distance between the belly button and anterior superior iliac spine. C. Carpopedal spasm while assessing the patient's blood pressure. Or D. Absent reflexes. Okay, so we learned from our scenario that this patient has osteoporosis and that they're prescribed calcitonin. So we really need to know what osteoporosis is and what calcitonin is doing because if we can understand those two processes we can know hey what should we be looking for as the nurse okay so let's do a recap about osteoporosis well we learned in our latest NCLEX review that osteoporosis is thinning of those bones specifically that spongy bone that's in the bones it's already naturally porous but what happens is it becomes increasingly porous which lowers our bone density so they're at risk for fractures real easy fractures so inside that spongy bone we talked about osteoclasts and osteoblasts and osteoclasts consume the material in that matrix specifically calcium and puts it back into our blood system and the osteoblasts will take the calcium from our blood system and build up that bone matrix and keep it nice and strong however with osteoporosis like the patient was postmenopausal, they have low estrogen levels, it can lead to osteoporosis and things like that. This patient has been prescribed calcitonin. Now calcitonin is naturally produced by our thyroid gland and it helps maintain our calcium levels in a sense. It's one of those hormones that play a role in bone health. So whenever our calcium levels are high, our thyroid gland secretes calcitonin. So what's calcitonin going to do? Well calcitonin will decrease osteoclast activity. So it's going to decrease how these cells are consuming bone because remember those cells consume bones and it releases the calcium into the blood. We're going to slow that down because we don't want to be wasting any more of our bone matrix. We need it. And this is going to allow those osteoblasts in a sense to outwork those osteoclasts because we're going to be building up bone better than we're actually breaking it down. But this is going to really mess with our calcium levels because we're not going to have those osteoclasts to go in there and break that bone down to give us some more calcium. Now, also calcitonin messes with how the kidneys excrete calcium. It's going to decrease it. I mean, it's going to increase the excretion of calcium. So you're going to be releasing all this calcium into your urine, so you're going to be wasting it, so blood levels are going to drop even more. And then your osteoclasts aren't going to be as active in breaking down that bone and getting that calcium from the bones. So what's going to happen to our calcium levels? Possibly, and we have to monitor the patient for this, we have to monitor them for hypocalcemia. So whenever you are looking at your options, you need to be thinking about that electrolyte in balance. So, in order to best answer this question, we need to know how calcitonin really worked. And one of its side effects, if we have too much going on in the system, we can have hypocalcemia. So let's look at our options and see which one goes along with hypocalcemia. Okay, A, constipation. Constipation is actually seen in hypercalcemia because what happens is that it slows down that GI tract, that stool just sets in there, the stool becomes hard, it's hard to pass, and the patient becomes constipated. So that's other side. So hypercalcemia is where you would see that. Okay, B, abdominal pain, one third distance between the belly button and anterior iliac spine. Well, they like to throw stuff out there at you like this because it looks abnormal. It's like, man, that's not good. But is it really going to be seen in a condition of a patient taking calcitonin? No, this is what's called McBurney's point, this area right here. And this is what is seen in appendicitis. We learned about that in our appendicitis video. So this was an appendix question. That would be a red flag, but not here. Okay, C. 
Carpopedal spasms while assessing patients' blood pressure. Hmm, what is this? This is Trousseau sign. And remember when we learned, when we were talking about hypocalcemia, we talked about Trousseau sign being positive. And what is this? This is where if you put some type of device like a blood pressure cuff or maybe even a tourniquet on that patient's upper arm, and it occludes the blood flow through that brachial artery and the calcium levels are low enough, it will cause these carpopedal spasms. And what happens is that involuntarily, that wrist is gonna flex and the thumb is gonna abduct and the fingers, the phalanges are gonna like extend. And they're going to, they may even complain of tingling while this is happening and pain. And it's just gonna go up like that while you're possibly taking the blood pressure. And that would be a huge red flag. You start them on calcitonin, you're taking their blood pressure, and all of a sudden you see that happening. So that is true so sign. Also, they may have a positive Chavotstick sign, which is um, that hyperexcitability of the uh, muscular, neuromuscular system where you tap on the masseter muscle in the face and they'll have twitching of the nose or the lips on that same side. Their reflexes are actually gonna be hyperactive, so looking at things like that. So that's why it would rule out D. So our answer would be C. Okay, so that wraps up this NCLEX practice review question and be sure to check out the other NCLEX questions in this series. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.